Welcome to the Paranormal Experienced Radio Show with your host, Cat Hobson. We are here to learn all we can about every type of experience within the paranormal. There will be interviews with seasoned investigators of the spiritual realm, including ufologists, cryptozoologists, psychics, mediums, authors, and creators of technology and others with credible knowledge to share. Together, we will find out what brought these investigators of the unknown into the field and learn what keeps them working so hard in it. I'm interested in learning how these individuals go about their work, and I believe you are too. This program is all about bringing those who are in the field together with our listeners who are interested in what they find. For us, the paranormal is all about working with and supporting each other. We're all here seeking answers to the questions that bother us so. Now, let's get those answers. And enjoy the show. Hello there, and welcome to Paranormal Experienced Radio on WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. I am Kat Hobson, your host. I am so glad you're here, and I know you're going to be too, because we have got the best guest. I'm excited that he's here. He hasn't done radio in a couple of years, with one exception, and now we're exception number two, so I'm pumped. This is someone who, with his beautiful bride and baby, lived through one of the most extreme hauntings that I'm familiar with and came out the other side and made a beautiful life. It took a little while, got through it, and he's here to share that experience with us and also some exciting news and also, in case you missed it on Facebook and all those multi-million posts that I make every day, He is giving away a set of his books. And there's not only a a set of books, they're signed. And he will ship them to our lucky winner. Have to be in the WBHM chat to win them. And, you know, I am going to just introduce you to Edwin F. Becker. And he is the author of True Haunting and True Haunting 2. The very first televised haunting in America on NBC. And Ed, thank you so much for joining me. I really enjoy talking to you. You're welcome, Kat. I I appreciate being invited. Well, I enjoy Uh, you. There's quite a few hosts that I don't enjoy. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm glad I'm not on that list. No, you work at it, and uh, there are hosts that just uh, introduce you, and then they sit back for the rest of the hour, two hours, and they don't really ask any questions or anything, and uh, you used to leave me talking forever, and uh, I won't do those shows again. <laughs> well, that gives you a sore throat. You know, oh, yeah. And, and when you're on my show, you're my guest, and I'm not going to let you get a sore throat if I can help it. I had somebody that said, you know... But you're talking at the end of it. He said, you talked a lot. I said, well, I was interested and I wanted to know what was happening. And we had some shared experiences. So did I offend you? He was like, no, nobody ever talks to me. (laughs) (laughs) And so I took that to heart. So, but you know what? I am going to save this archive forever and ever. Amen. Because of that comment. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. That is you're quite welcome. a compliment. If I could, I'd like to start with uh, talking about the movie. Oh, please do. Uh, I wasn't sure just how far I could go with that. I, I you know, I, I can go as far as they let me, uh, as far as I know, because uh, one one thing I found out is 
a lot of people in the paranormal have messaged me and they say, well, you know, when's the movie coming out? Like, like they're going to finish it next month or something. When Hollywood invests millions of dollars, they have to make sure everything's perfect. So the screenwriter alone gets 12 to 16 weeks to write the screenplay. And then they absolutely go out and look for a director that's good and has a record in, in the genre of paranormal. And uh, then, of course, you get casting and you get location and you have all these other things. We'll be lucky to get it out in 2020. I, I, that's what they're shooting for. But uh, it, it, it amazed me. I mean, I, I sort of redeemed myself in my family's eyes. You know, that the book, the book itself, I, I am the laziest author in the world. So no one's lazier than I am. Uh, when I gave my daughter the, the, it was it was even it wasn't even a finished manuscript. I gave her, and the actual cover of the book was a mock-up that I gave her. It was only intended to show her what kind of like what I wanted on the cover, and she just published the whole mess. And uh, I was angry until I found out it just skyrocketed to number one. And it's all that book's always been on its own. I've never used an agent. I've never used a PR I person. I didn't realize that. Yeah, I, I've never, I've never paid a dime for advertising. I, I don't do paracons. I don't do book signings. So I've done, I've done zero promotion, <laughs> and uh, it, it's just it's got a life of its own. It really has. Well, I but, find uh, that amazing, especially the no paracons or signings, because that's almost unheard of. It may actually be unheard of. Yeah, I uh, I don't feel right sitting at a table signing books for people. I'm uncomfortable. And the, the paracons themselves are uncomfortable because uh, they're a little bit like a carnival. I can you know, see you that. got people they're, they're selling stuff and they're hawking their their goods and uh some of them are in costume and in uh you know, it just it just makes me feel like it's a little bit like a nut house. Uh, so now I stay away from the paracons. Uh I uh, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't a year after I released the book. I released the book, and, and almost immediately, within a month, Paranormal Witness was on my case, wanting me to do the uh, their episode. And we went through about six months of negotiating before we, we got it. And the negotiating I do isn't for money. It, it's uh, it's always for quality. Yes. Because they're, up, they're, they're showing my family, you know. And uh, I, I certainly didn't want them to distort anything, Uh because I found out there's there's two different audiences. There's the reading audience, which are, are very, very good, and they, they dot the I's, cross the T's, and if you make a mistake, they'll tell you about it. Mm-hmm. And then there's the viewing audience. The viewing audience, they don't read. Uh, you know, And if you put something on the, on the screen that is not in the book, man, they're going to come at you bitching. Uh, <laughs> where did this go? You know, it wasn't in your book. Yeah. As, if the, as, as if the episode came before the book. So it, it's really uh, kind of crazy. I didn't have a good experience, actually, with Paranormal Witness. I never would have did it except my uh, my wife and my granddaughters. So, you know, they threatened to leave me. So oh. I did Paranormal Witness. I uh, It wasn't long after that. This goes back to 2012 that uh, I got a, my first movie offer. Right. And uh, I did not like it because uh, I did a little bit of my homework and I found out what uh, what budgets should be for a good movie and for a crappy movie. And they set the budget too low. So I knew they were going to turn it into garbage. And, right. uh, well, that I book is too down. good for that, yes. And the next movie contract I got, uh, they, I was demanding a, uh, a, right, of, a right of refusal. Mm-hmm. So if I didn't like what they wrote, I could strike it. Well, no one's going to give me that. In the movie industry, they won't do that. They give it to Stephen King, maybe, but not, from, not to me. Uh, but I had to trust the person that I'm giving my book to. And uh, the next movie company, 
said, well, okay, we can't let you have a screenplay because it could cost them a lot of money to have a screenplay, but we'll give you a synopsis. So they gave me the synopsis, and they added a whole bunch of crap in there. That wasn't uh, in the book? And, yeah, not in the book. Uh, and after talking to them, they had a whole team of people who do nothing but sit in a room and, and invent crap that uh, has never been in another movie before. Ah. So so they can fix uh, And in my case, they were going to have a, a, a bunch of raccoons come down from the attic, you know. What? And, uh, yeah, it was just crazy. I laughed my ass off because I, I said, number one, in Chicago, there are no raccoons. I was going to say, you're in urban Chicago. Yeah, they, they've been eating already a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, the second thing is, I, I, I don't deal well with animals that are, you know, that bother me. So I'd be wearing that raccoon as a hat in five minutes. <laughs> uh, but I, I, after dealing with them and, and trying to work something out, I, I, I said, no, I'm not going to do it. Well, my family got angry with me. You know, well, then, then came the third one, and uh, it was like, maybe like the second one. There was two, and they were going to add a lot of creative stuff to it. And I thought it's over the top. I turned that one down. And uh, my family was convinced that I just didn't want a movie to be made. So they were all angry with me. But lo and behold, you know, uh, last summer, I got a, a telephone call and an email from a company in uh, Hollywood. And it was actually the president of the entertainment company that called me. And she was uh, very excited when she found out my, my book was free and clear of any commitments. She was excited like she found gold. And, uh, you know, I wish I could have been. I can't, I can't get myself to that excited because it's been eight years for me I've been walking with this book. Right. But uh, they were excited. And... Uh, They've just been wonderful, wonderful people to work with. Uh, they did some classy movies. I, I think one of the movies uh, that I, I saw was called Red Lights, which was with Sigourney Weaver and Robert De Niro. Mm -hmm. And that was a subject of paranormal, and they handled it very, very well. Uh, so it came time. In the meantime, now I broke my hip or my uh, pelvis. So they weren't going to take me. They wanted me to come to Hollywood. I couldn't go. So they sent the scriptwriters here to my house in Springfield, Missouri. And we went over, we spent a day together. And, uh, you know, those, those guys are very, very good. They're, they're like uh, psychologists, almost. He wanted to know stuff that's what's between the lines, you know. Oh, uh, so he was in-depth and yeah, into it. And, uh, yeah, he, he asked me. I told him there's a lot between the lines because I, I wasn't completely honest in the book. You know, there were times when I was afraid and I didn't document it in the book that way. Uh, so we went over those things. And, he, you know, he said, when was the first time you got a, a, a chill? And I said, the first time I got a chill was the day we were moving in. I said, me and my blind friend were carrying the couch up the stairs. I said, you know, I'd been familiar with my friend. He got blinded in Vietnam, so I'd worked with him a lot and uh, socialized with him, and I realized blind people have exceptional hearing. Mm -hmm. So as we're carrying the couch up the stairs, he turned his head around, and he said, who's there? And I said, nobody, nobody's there. He said, somebody's there. And I said, nobody's there. And it took him a few more steps, and he said, who's there? And I said, there's nobody there. And he said, he just was kind of scratching his head, and we took the couch in, but at that point, I wondered, what did he hear? You know, in uh, it was kind of a spooky little a moment, and it was actually before I was ever a believer. Uh, and there were there were things that I told him. I said, you know, I, I said, what scared the bejesus out of me? I said, was uh, the night my dog came running into our room, jumped up on the bed, put her neck to the, to the mattress, and just growled and looked at our, our bedroom door. And I said, the only thing I could think of was, this is a dog that would protect me at all costs. What does she see that she's coming to?